Hey guys, so originally I wanted to do a fuse video, and I realized after working on it for a bit that a lot of stuff I wanted to showcase wasn't so obvious, and I feel like they needed a bit more explaining. So I'm going to try something different and give you guys a tricks and tips video for fuse. So first and foremost, do not use fuse with the hopes of getting free lucky kills. I can't tell you how many times I've seen fuse players pop all three cluster charges into the objective and get absolutely nothing. Against half decent players, this will never work, and it's simply a waste of his utility. Instead, what you want to do is dedicate the first one or two cluster charges towards destroying defensive utility. That's mainly barbed wire, lesion mines, concussion mines, burning out the ADSs, etc. And the funny thing is, Fuse is actually one of the best operators to deal with defensive utility, which actually makes him more so a supportive operator rather than a fragging operator. So to effectively use Fuse's cluster charge, it's very important to understand the pattern that the explosives come out of the gadget. It's not completely random, it actually has a very strict pattern from right to left. Now in this example, we're playing on theme park at the daycare bunks objective. And typically below this hatch, this hallway is usually riddled with defensive utility. So as Fuse, we're going to want to destroy it, as much of it as possible. Now the orientation of this cluster charge is very important. The pucks will go right to left, so in this case they're going to go from east to west. Uh, this is actually the wrong way to do it. Uh, and I will show you why. Uh, map knowledge is very important in terms of effectively using the cluster charge because you have to know what you're exactly you're fusing. Uh, so again, it's going to land east to west, which means I can stand right here and be completely fine. Uh, it should land like so. Uh, and if you notice, all the pucks pretty much stack on one spot, which means you're not really covering much ground. So going back, we're going to do it the correct way and place it so that it covers the majority of the hallway. This way, it's going to go from south to north. And again, to show you what it looks like from down below, south to north will lead from the bunks doorway all the way to the daycare doorway. This covers as much ground as possible within this hallway, destroying every piece of gadget. Uh, so should you choose to drop down this hatch, it is significantly safer and much easier to make your final push into the site. So it's also useful to know that when using a cluster charge, the third explosive that it shoots out will always go perfectly straight. What this allows you to do is have extremely precise placements on where you want the explosives to go. So for this example, I just need one explosive to land in the doorway on border, which quite often has barbed wire, concussion mines, and lesion mines placed at the doorway, preventing anybody from rushing in. Uh, so we put a cluster charge on the opposite side in the security room, and when popping it off, you'll notice that the third pub lands perfectly inside the doorway, destroying any barbed wire or gadgets that are placed over inside. So now that you've destroyed as much of the defensive utility as you can, it's time to use the remaining one or two cluster charges to flush the enemies out of the objective or even get kills with them. The problem though is that the cluster charge is not discreet whatsoever. They're loud when you place them, they're loud when you detonate them, and the enemies have plenty of time to run away from the explosives before they even blow up. So what you want to do is pre-place your cluster charge, and before detonating them, you reposition yourself in a way that allows you to catch defenders rotating off to safety. When they rotate off to safety, it puts them in a much more vulnerable position, allowing for a very easy kill with your primary weapon. This may not directly get kills with the cluster charge, but the end result is the same. Uh, for all my shield players out there, I also want to add, if you're playing Fuse with a shield, you actually have more options strategically than you would with Fuse AK. Now don't get me wrong, the Fuse AK still has way more killing potential than Fuse with a shield, at least in my experience. But when you're playing Fuse with a shield, you also have the option to, you yourself, be the distraction for your cluster charge to then get the kill. And the beauty about this is that the Fuse Shield will protect you from your own explosive damage. Therefore, you can push into the same room that you are blowing up. And even if the enemy chooses to run away, you still have the option to gun them down. Now keep in mind, the shield will only protect you from explosive damage that occur in front of your shield. Therefore, it's very important that you understand that cluster charge pattern, ensuring that no pucks land to your side, behind you, or just too close and hurt yourself. Now unfortunately I tried right there to do another tactic which I rarely ever see and that is to use your cluster charges to defend an active diffuser. Uh, admittedly this doesn't work often and that's because usually your team will clean house and you'll never get the option to do it. This is more so a last resort option uh, but when you have that last resort it is 
Fantastic. Then, and play fuse above. Ooh, I like this idea. This is a good idea right here. Now notice how I'm placing the charge. The explosives go from right to left, like so it. the first puck should land at the bottom of the stairs. She's down. One friendly operator remaining. <laughs> Worked like a charm. Worked like a freaking charm. I love it. I love it. Oh man, that's beautiful. So this is just another instance of me using the cluster charge to defend an active diffuser, but I'm showcasing this particular clip because it references back to that border clip. Remember how I showed you the third puck will always shoot out perfectly straight? And this allows for precision fusing. And in this instance, I go back to the second floor and place the charge directly above the hatch so that it drops directly onto the active diffuser. Now, despite me discouraging you guys from using cluster charges randomly where you just pop them off and hope for the best, I will admit not every map and objective has strategic possibilities for Fuse's cluster charge. Uh, or maybe I just don't know them and haven't figured them out yet. But quite often I'll have too many cluster charges that I need and just pop one or two off randomly hope for the best. While I'll use the last one for a strategic push. Anyway. Back in the day, Fuse had flashbangs, and one of my favorite things to do was flash and fuse. This would disorient the enemies and increase the likelihood that these random cluster charges would work. Unfortunately, Ubisoft did nerf Fuse and got rid of his flashbangs in place of smoke. I think this was for an indirect nerf towards Glass because he got a thermal scope. Anyway, he doesn't have flashbangs anymore, but we do have something better, and that is Ying. Uh, I feel like this is kind of a well-known tactic to Ying and Fuse, but I really don't see it personally at all. I've all done it myself, but I've never seen it done to me or anybody else. Uh, so I just kind of want to encourage the teamwork that if you're popping off random cluster charges, have a ying. This helps significantly and the odds of actually getting a free easy kill. Now my final tip for you is admittedly very high risk. I don't recommend you try this all the time. and. Granted, it really would only work once because it's meant to catch people off guard, and that is the Cluster Charge Hot Breach. The concept is very simple. You fuse the window, you breach on in immediately after the explosions. Now, I actually mistimed my breach here. It was a little late, and I almost died because of it. It didn't really catch the Valkyrie off guard as much as I would wanted it to, uh, but it still did force her away from the windows and put her in the only position she really could have been. So this is actually a moment where I felt that I did the cluster charge hot breach absolutely perfectly and timed it to a T. Uh, I didn't even need a breach and charge it, I meleeed my way in. But take note of how I'm repelling in while the explosions are going off. It's important to know that not only the explosions clearing the, the immediate area of enemies, but it's also masking the sound of you repelling in. When you repel in, it's such a distinct and loud noise, you're usually dead before you even hit the windowsill. But with the explosions going off, it, it's a whole different story. It's just all the noise and chaos completely drowns out the sound of you repelling in, which is why you can so easily catch people off guard. So yeah, that is my tips and tricks video for Fuse. I hope you guys enjoyed, and most importantly, I hope you guys learned something new. Uh, I've been meaning to do these type of videos for quite some time now, and it makes me so happy that I finally did it. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I, 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 I normally don't ask for likes and comments and all that, but in this case, I'm looking for some constructive feedback. Let me know if you liked it, didn't like it, what I could have done better. Uh, and uh, if you did like it, let me know what operators you want to see next, uh, and I will uh, consider working on those in the near future. Uh, thank you guys again for watching, and I just want to say I'm sorry for taking like two weeks off and haven't been posting for a while. Uh, I just needed some time away from Siege and uh, uh, the whole YouTube stream life and, you know, uh, just enjoy life as it is. And But I'm coming back. I'll be posting regularly, uh, and I hope to see you all in the near future. So until next time, guys, take care.